All right, so we're picking back up on the where we left off on the skull. We got it cleaned off, all the tissue and meat and stuff, so none of that will rot. Um, then we boiled it in uh, dish soap and borax to try to leach all the grease and oil out of the bone itself. And this one's actually one of the whiter ones that I've done coming out of the boiling process. So we got a pretty good head start on uh, the whitening process that I'm about to show you. Um, I got all the supplies ready, uh, so let's get to it. Alright, so you actually don't need all that much to do the whitening process. Uh, what we have here is hair whitener product. This is uh, whitening powder. This is volume 40 cream. And this is volume 40 peroxide. Uh, you don't need both of these. You only need one of them. Um, I think the only difference is that uh, this is pre-mixed with a little bit of powder already. Um, and it actually seems like uh, the way I've been doing it, I like it very thick and pasty. Uh, so I use a lot of the powder and I've been using that up quickly. So I do like using the cream because I don't use as much powder with it rather than uh, just pure volume 40 peroxide. Um, you know, you can get this stuff at like Walmart if you want, but uh, your better bet is to go through somebody who has a barber's license. Uh, you can get it a lot cheaper. I've done like five or six deer skulls. I've done two bear. Uh, a couple coons, fox, uh, a bobcat, you know, a beaver with all of this. So um, it does go a long way. All right, so first I just dumped some of this in here. You can see it's kind of pasty, but I like it to be a lot more pasty than that. Um, so. Just start with that and mix it up and then uh, I'll kind of show you how uh, thick I like it to be. So this actually isn't too bad. Um, you can see it kind of clings to the, the stirring stick. That's what we're looking for. Uh, when I paint it onto the actual skull I want it to cling to the, the bone. I don't want it to be running off and uh, you can kind of see it's running off a little bit, so I'm probably going to put another half scoop into there, and that should be good. That's looking a little bit better. All right, so all we're going to do is take our brush, get some of that, and we're going to paint it on every white surface of the skull. Um, some people will actually tape off their their uh, antlers so they don't bleach the antlers. I'm pretty confident in myself. I've, I haven't bleached any antlers yet. Um, it's really not that hard if you're a little bit careful when you just get up to where the antlers are. And... Alright, so I got the whole skull covered. Um, you're going to want to be careful, obviously, around the antlers. Uh, if you get any of this whitener stuff on your hands or on your gloves, don't go grabbing the antlers. Um, Normally I just hold it by the antlers and I spin it around and in these uh, small crevices and stuff you want to get it in there as well um, and I'll take take the uh, end of my brush and I just kind of dab it in there um, down into the brain cavity a little bit, down into the nasal cavity and stuff um, and I just get all that paste on every visible surface on the skull. So um, this is done for a little while now. We're going to let that dry uh, and we'll come back to it in uh, a few hours once it's dry. Alright, so I finished up the bottom jaws as well. Um, if you do those, you're definitely going to want to make sure you wear gloves because uh, handling those, you're going to have to touch the paste with your hands. Um, you know, unlike the skull, you can just hold on to the antlers the whole time and not worry about it. But uh, if you do the bottom jaws and you're doing it for aging purposes, uh, make sure you age it before you whiten it. Or if you want to be able to look back at them for aging purposes, uh, don't whiten them because uh, this stuff will take all the stains off the teeth and it's going to make it very difficult to age your deer. So uh, just something to think about and uh, now we'll just let it dry like I said and get back to you in a couple hours. 
All right, so I let that dry overnight, and uh, there's really not that much left to do now. Um, all I have left is to take uh, bleach in a spray bottle, and I'll completely soak the outside of the skull again, and I'll moisten all that uh, hair whitener. That kind of reactivates it and allows it to uh, whiten more, and it also gives that dried paste gives the bleach something to stick to and it allows the bleach to do some whitening as well. Um, I've never had any problems with the bleach uh, you know softening or turning the skull to powder doing it this way but I have had trouble if you if you uh, use bleach in the boiling process. Normally I'll spray one side of these and of the jaws and try to get maybe a little bit underneath of them. But then the next time I go uh, to spray them, I'll flip them. So I get the other side. Looks like it's pretty well soaked. And uh, now I just let it dry again for a few hours. And I'll repeat this process um, two, three, four times, whatever you feel like. All right, so I sprayed it three times with the bleach and let it dry each time. Um, it took me about a day and a half of doing that, letting it dry. And uh, you can see most of the paste um, kind of gets washed away when you bleach, when you spray the bleach on. But there are some spots like in the nasal cavity there that has a ton of foamy stuff in it still. But um, I'm going to call it good. And so now it's time to wash it off. Alright, so I've let it dry for a few hours, and you can see there's just a little bit of moisture still in there, creating a few dark spots, but that'll whiten up once those dry out. Same thing in the skull, there's a few dark spots here, but that'll whiten up. Um, I have it under the same lighting, so hopefully the video will allow you to do a, a little bit of a comparison of before and after, uh, and you can see how much it whitened up. Um, in person it's a lot whiter and I'm very happy with it but not only is it whiter um, another advantage of this this process is uh, when I smell inside the brain cavity and up the nasal passage um, it smells very clean it smells like bleach so uh, that's that's another advantage of doing it this way uh, I like the look of it like this uh, the natural look with no finishes on it, but some people do like to do finishes. Uh, if you want to do a finish, uh, I just suggest uh, not using polyurethane because that the coating will actually yellow over time. You should probably look into getting like an acrylic and definitely tape off your antlers before you do that. Um, but like I say, this is this is how I like it. So. Um, I will be doing a video on uh, a mount or a plaque for this. Last year I did a two-dimensional broadhead that kind of hangs on the wall. And uh, this year I have an idea for a three-dimensional broadhead that will sit on like a desk or a table. Um, and one of the blades will stick straight up on it and hold the, the skull. So that should be pretty cool. Stay tuned for that. Um, if you want to check out a, a cool way to make the bottom jaws into a deer picture frame, uh, I already have a video on that, so you can go check that one out. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section.